let's take a moment to remember, because we've been looking at simultaneous equations, I should say, you've been looking at simultaneous equations quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, and you've actually sort of developed a bit of a um, suite of skills and techniques that you can use when you see a pair of equations, and you know you're going to have to solve them simultaneously because there's two letters. There's two letters. So can you see, for example, if I hid the second line here, right, and I just gave you 2x plus 3y equals 5, um, you can't find just one solution to that. Why is that? Do you remember why you can't find just one solution to a question like that? Okay, so there's two, there's two pronumerals, right? There's two things that you could solve for. Um, but the point was, like, I can change the value of x, and that will give me a different value of y, right? And each time you change, you get a new value. You, in fact, get an infinite set of values, and that's kind of, well, what, which one's the solution? Um, and at that point, they all are, right? So once you add in a second one, you're like, oh, now I have more information. I can put these together. I can solve them all at once, i.e. simultaneously, okay? Yeah. So I want you to remember, what was the very first thing that we did when you've got a pair of equations like this? Um, how could we find a solution for this? Yeah. Well, we number them like one. Uh, okay, so yeah, we can, we can actually label these. Now, before we got to labeling, I will, I will use these labels in a second. But there was an approach we learned very early on that didn't really require us to label them. We did have to draw some things though. Did you remember? Okay, so our second method was to solve things graphically. So what we did was we said, actually, we can represent these guys as straight lines. If you draw these straight lines, the solution is where the straight lines intersect where they meet do you remember that okay so in other words where are the lines at the same place where are they simultaneously that's one of the ways you could do it um, the precursor to doing it graphically is a yeah a table of values right but we kind of decided for each of these that even though they worked number one they kind of only worked some of the time like this one you had to pick like the right values to get there and you maybe just chose bad values the first time and you don't want to have a table that grows forever. Uh, and what was, our, um, what was our reluctance to use a graphical method? Why didn't we like it? It's very time consuming, right? Uh, and it's also less precise if it's not bang on, like you've got a grid on your book, but if the point where they meet isn't like on a grid line, you're like, mm, I don't know, it's kind of around there. So it lacks precision. Okay. That's why we introduced um, the third method this week, which was not... Yeah, okay, good. So if you solve by substitution, you don't need a table, you don't need a picture, you deal with these guys just as X's and Y's. Now, what you get in precision and speed, because it is faster, you don't have to draw, um, it is more precise because you don't have to rely on a, on a drawing that might be inaccurate, what you sacrifice is that it's just kind of harder to wrap your head around, right? Like you're just moving these abstract X's and Y's. But I think we all agree that for most cases, it's a worthy trade-off, okay? Now, elimination is the fourth method. Elimination. It's the fourth one, and it's kind of like a parallel to substitution in that it's it, like substitution. It's purely algebraic. You don't have to draw anything. Um, you just have to muck around with these X's and Y's in a particular way and out will leap your solution, okay? So here's the idea, and if you've got another color there, it might be helpful. What you wanna look at is that when we did substitution, uh, in fact, don't write this down, but just remember, if I gave you an equation like this, here we go, okay? So if you had a look at this, can you tell me if we used method three, if we did, um, Solving by substitution. If I call this equation one and equation two, what would be your next line? I'm going to sub one of these into the other. Which one do I sub into which? Two into one. Very good. Because you can see this one already has one of the pronumerals as the subject, right? So it makes that easy to put into there. So you sub two into one, and the line you would get out of result as a result would look like this. Uh, what do you think? Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Now here's the really important thing. I want you to look really carefully at this line. The reason why this line is an improvement on the original situation is that from the beginning you had two letters. You had two pronouns. And you're like, well, I don't know. I've got to work out both of them. 
You've got two letters here as well. But this black line here that I've circled, it's just got one, right? And we've been solving these for years, actually. And so even though it takes some practice, you can expand this, you can collect like terms, we're fine with that, okay? So you've turned a problem with two polynomials into a problem with one, and that's better. So in other words, if you look at a problem and you can remove one of the letters from problem, in other words, if you can eliminate one of the letters out of the problem, then that instantly makes the problem easier to solve. Okay. So have a look at this. Now here's the way I'm going to um, suggest we do this, and at the first point it might be a bit confusing as to why I'm doing it, but it will become apparent. I want these two pairs of letters here, I want some of them to match with each other. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the second equation, I'm going to multiply it by 2. Okay. Now, like I said, you might be wondering, why that? Why 2? Why not 3? Why equation 2, not equation 1? In a second, hopefully, you'll be able to tell me why. Equation 2 times 2 means everything you see there, left-hand side, right-hand right side, multiply everything by 2. If you multiply the left-hand side by 2, what do you get? 2x minus 4y equals 14. Okay, there's the left-hand side, and here comes the right-hand side. You with me so far? Okay. Now, what I've done is I've mucked about with equation 2. I've created a third equation, but do you remember, I suggest, rather than calling this equation 3, I would probably call that 2 a. Yeah. You can call it anything you like, but at least this makes it clear where it came from. Okay. Now I want you to compare this equation we've just made with the very first equation, the one which we left alone. Okay. Do you see that each of them has a 2x in it? Right. So these two, because these bits are equal, right? if I collide them in the right way, the two x's can cancel each other out and they will become eliminated from the problem. And all I'll be left with is y's. And that's what we did here. We turned um, a two pronumeral problem into a one pronumeral problem, and that was better. Okay. So the question becomes, well, in what way do I put these guys together such that the two x's will cancel each other out? Hmm. What do you reckon? Yeah, very good. I should do some kind of subtraction, right? Because then there will be a 2x, take away a 2x, and that will be left with nothing. It will be eliminated, okay? Now, as to which way you do it, it actually doesn't matter. You will get the same result either way. But in this case, I'm thinking we go with, we just, you don't have this in your books, so and we get rid of it. I'm thinking our next step will be equation 1, take away equation 2x, right? So let's all write that down. 